This is to demonstrate a method to place the fastest path line work for roundabout. And a couple things to note from the NCHRP report 1043 is that this graphic here shows the movements that we're going to look at and the R values that they have. So the blue line is the through movement for R1, R2, and R3. The red line is a left turn, which is R4, and the green line is a right turn for R5. And also want to note that the line will be 5 feet from the face of a curb, 3 feet from a paint line. We want to begin and end the path at 165 feet from the inscribed circle diameter. And the arc that we use to measure, we want that arc to be between 65 and 80 feet in length. So I have some levels set up here to help demonstrate this. And the first thing I want to do is make the 165 foot offset. And I'm going to use the outside of the circulating lane, which would be this paint line right here. And then the next thing I want to do is make two more 25 foot offsets. These will be points that I can use to set the begin and end direction of the spline curve that we're going to create. And then next we'll put in our offsets. So again, we want three feet from a paint line. So three feet here, five feet from the face of a curb. And again, this is for the through movement. So we're gonna offset the apron, this return here, and then again, five feet from our exit point there. I'm going to extend this just so I got a place to snap there. Then to uh, place the path, I'm going to use B spline by points. You can use control points or through points. The through point method seems to be less iteration to get the line to lay down where you want it. I'm going to set my snap to intersect, and you can see I'll use these points here. This will set that beginning direction. And then we'll have the vertice here, here, and here. Then once again, we'll set the ending direction here. Go to Modify Element, and we'll go through and set these to match the offset that we want. And we want to just think of a car going through here as fast as it can. And you're going to want to just barely clip this at the smallest point, so not too far here, not too far over here. You can see if you just kind of adjust it back and forth, you kind of see where it lays in there right on top of it. We'll check here. That seems OK. And then to, uh, to draw the arcs, the first thing I like to do is I'll put a circle, make it 70 foot diameter, and I can draw the arc inside of this, and I'll know I'm getting it just about 70 foot long. And again, I'm going to want to pick the point where I think that is tangent. And then before I draw the arc, I'm going to just turn off this offset line work level so I'm not snapping to the wrong element. And so if I come close to the edge of the circle here, then I know I'm getting between 65 and 70 foot length for that. Then we're going to label these just for reference. And you can see this R3 or the exit radius is very large. It's a very flat curve. That would be a very fast speed based on the speed radius table. So for this 
we're actually going to use uh, a speed based on acceleration that can be attained from this curve back here. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. So we can go to the R4. I'm going to turn off these. So the R4 is our left turn, which is basically just an offset from the apron curb. So I'm going to do that and label that up. And then we can do our R5, our right turn. So I'm going to turn this off. So again, we'll do our offsets. Five feet from curb. Three from paint line. Extend that just a bit. Back to five for this curb, basic curb line. And then to finish up, we'll go back to three. Like that. Again, go back to B spline by points. Intersect snap. Set my beginning direction. And for this one, there's just one point you're going to put here. And then you'll end up again down here. Modify tool. Again, we want to find out just where it's going to lay on here at the smallest contact point. Check these, looks good. Put my circle in. And then before I do the arc, I'm going to turn off my offset level, place the arc. and label that up. All right, I'm going to turn all the levels back on. You can see that we have R1, 2, 3, R4, and R5. And I took the equations from the NCHRP report. You can see I have them noted here. So the left side for R1, 2, 4, and 5, it's the speed and radius table with the adjustment for slope, whether it's positive or negative. You can see R1 and R5 is positive slope, R2 and R4 is negative. And then for R3, like I said, we're going to use the uh, speed that can be achieved by the starting velocity at R2 times the distance it's going to travel. So we can take these values now and plug them in. So R1 is 172. This is 25. R2 is 116, which is 20. So now we can take this 20 miles an hour that we're getting at R2 and plug that in here. And we'll measure the distance that the vehicle can travel to get there. So right about this apex of this curve, we're going to measure over to the apex of this curve. And one thing to note is in this example, there's a crosswalk opening here. If you do have a crosswalk, you want to make sure that you measure the speed at that crosswalk. We don't want traffic going more than 35 when it gets to that area. So if your curve has to be back here further, also check what you're getting here. And in this case, it looked about the same spot. I'm just going to Mark it there. That's 101 feet. So I'm going to put 101 in here. 32 miles an hour. Our radius 4 is 48. 
14 miles an hour, and radius 5 is 82. So there's our values. I like to go ahead and if I have a file that I'm checking these in, I will just put them in the file so that I can remember and see other people can check it. So we got 25, 20, and 32. 14 is already there, 19 is there. So we also want to look at the entry speed and the spread of the numbers that we have. So our entry of 172 gives us 25 miles an hour, which is acceptable. You don't want more than 25 for a single lane. If it's a dual lane, you can go up to 30 miles an hour. And we also want to look at the spread. We've got a low of 14, 19, 20, 25. So those are all very close. And this exit speed is going to be a little faster, but it's still within the parameters that we want to see. You'd want to also do this for the other right turns and the other through movements, but the process would be the same. Thank you.